Oh, God, got him. There we go. That one smacked it good. Fishing freaks, welcome on back. It's cold, man. Woo! I've decided to bear the elements today. Let's see if we can catch the fish on a really cold day on the big waters. So, I'm on a lake. Uh, this is Lake Texoma. It's known for having smallmouth. The reason I like coming up here in the winter time is because uh, it usually has decent water clarity. I like clear water in the winter time. There's just not a lot of lakes around me that have uh, water with this clarity. Uh, there's really good smallmouth. You can catch a really nice smallmouth. In fact, my biggest uh, Texas smallmouth has come from here. Five pounds. My PB smallmouth period is out of Erie. That was six pounds. But until then, until last year, this is uh, probably 10 years ago, maybe more than that. I've caught, uh, caught my personal best out here. This time of year on a spoon, fishing a gold spoon off ledges. So I was talking about this a little bit the other day on a local lake and then I just got to thinking, yeah, I'm gonna go up to the big water and see if I can throw a spoon around, throw some crankbaits, throw some swim baits and, and just see what happens. Of course the jerk bait, don't forget about the jerk bait. Been hearing about that a lot lately. That's just cause proven wintertime tactic. But anyway, we might get it. We might get into some big stripers, um, and we might not catch anything. I don't know. It's really tough conditions as far as just being the elements out here. But um, windy. Got some gravel. Got some boulders. We're gonna fish some points. And right now, I'm just looking for ledges, looking for bait, and then we're gonna get the shiny stuff out there. Okay, let's give her a whirl. Deep. Spooning, jigging. That's what we're gonna start out with. Just gonna kind of drift with the wind over some deep water. I'm sitting in 40 foot. Uh, just graph this whole bank. I went like two or three hundred yards, and I was just looking for bait. I didn't see a whole lot, but I did see uh, some fish that are hanging on these ledges. So I'm just gonna. Take a chance here. The, the idea with this technique, which I really like for deep winter fishing, is, is you can get your bait down there pretty quick with, uh, with these spoons. I mean, it's at the bottom within seconds, and then you're, you're working where those fish are. So if I'm seeing a lot of fish suspended higher up in the water column, this is, this is not gonna be the deal. But if they're close to the bottom or hanging on uh, some structure, which they are here, just a, a ledge it starts in kind of 20 foot and then drops off. Uh, I'm sitting in 40 foot, throwing up into probably 15 and then working it down that ledge. Big boulders and cold water equals big old brown fish. Come on now. Even though there's not many bites, it's the kind of the program of winter fishing. You don't get nearly as many bites as you would in the spring or summer fall but uh, the chance of catching a big fish is always there they're going to be at their fattest in the winter and early spring oh gosh mm, hammered i don't know if y'all saw my line it's twitch right there but it just got smacked there's one Got him. Ah, come here, baby. Oh, Smalley. I think he's a Smalley. He's awfully pale. Yeah, he's a small mouse. Good fight on the old spinning gear. Man, I don't know if that was the same fish. But one just smoked it. Then this might this guy might have come back and gotten it. Can I sling you, dude? You're so heavy. Smallmouth are just heavy. There we go. That's what we're talking about right there, folks. Look at that water depth. See a little bit of bait down there. Deep. 
56 feet of water and uh, just pumped that thing. He was probably in 35 or so down there pretty deep. Nice fish right there. It's a beautiful thing right there. That's what I came up here for. Just to catch one of these cold Texas beauties in the winter. It's fun stuff, guys. Still got some fight. The fight on a largemouth versus a smallmouth in the winter, I mean, there's just no comparison. But gosh, see, the first one just smoked it. And then, I, I don't know if it was the same fish. It was probably a good 20 feet uh, after I, I got that first bite. And then it just loaded. Like, the fish just had it. So it might have chased it down the ledge. Uh, that's one good thing about a smallmouth is, is even when it's cold, they're, they're just more aggressive. So they got a little bit more tail power. Even when it's cold, they're just designed to be in it more. But uh, I might switch up and throw some other spoons and things like that because that was uh, that was my second or third hit that I just didn't connect on. So um, I really like gold for these conditions. You know, we've got mostly overcast right now, and the gold's going to have good flash down there deep. Um, I'll probably end up tying on a gold, just a plain spoon as well but uh, we're gonna keep going with this tactic I've got this on uh, I think this is 10 pound mono leader and then I've got um, 15 pound either 15 or 20 pound this is some of our early uh, Guggen squad braid that I got in some samples of orange I'm just throwing that on one of our finesse rods in the gold series all right let's get back out there see if we can crank another one One. Dumped it. I felt I could be doing myself a disservice if I didn't just pick up a jerk bait, throw it around as a point. Might be a shallow one or two suspended up there. Oh my gosh, I hit a carp. Thought I bumped something. Oh my god, got smacked right there. Oh, that had to be a smallmouth. Oh my gosh, he cranked it. A little shallow spot next to this deep water. That one thumped it. I can't believe I didn't connect. Do a little switcheroo here with a saucy on a underspin. Just give a different look, something that throw across these points and juicy banks since I have had uh, one shallow bite now on a crankbait this I can fish mid depth and deep there's gotta be one around this bank it's just too gnarly looking I don't like the water clarity I'll tell you that I don't know what's going on here but these huge boulders sitting in 56 foot the old brown beauty is down there I really want that thing falling I want to lift it up and feel it falling down the ledge Oh gosh, one smacked it. Smacked it on the fall. That's seven bites I've gotten. 
It is some wavy gravy out here, man. Come on. Make it all worth it. Give me that four pound brown fish. Oh, God, got him. There we go. That one smacked it good. Come here, baby. Be a good one. Another brown one. Woo! About the same size. Fun, though. I mean, crushed it. broke my line should have not done that <laughs> all muscle all just a complete muscle ball man Woo. all right dude thank you for giving me that bite because that's just the bite i needed right now eight bites two fish but i'm proud to have that one I needed that one. That was like a uh, just a momentum fish right there. Any smallmouth is a good smallmouth. See you, buddy. Man, y'all, when they hit it down there, even though it's it's you know 30, 40 foot down, you can just feel it. So awesome. Uh, I really like using that braid too, so you can feel every rock. It's really important when you're fishing the spoons and the you know basically things that are heavy and have treble hooks throwing it down these rocks and these ledges as soon as you hit the bottom lift it up so having that braid uh, as a main line really helps to feel that as soon as I I feel the bottom just lift up and let it keep falling so I just got my ninth bump idle over to a point here sitting in 47 been sitting in about 50 foot and I'm pretty much on a point. That's been the two things in common. Oh yeah. There is a suspender right there on the point. A couple of them. Uh, just don't know. Just don't think we have the water clarity for the jerkbait bite today. And they're just they're deep. They're too deep where you just can't see it. I think we gotta move. Got to try another location here. Just been grinding on the same bank. Yep, yep, that's a solid in the crack. Oh no, we got it. Very nice, very nice. Let's do this. Sun going down. Final. Final countdown. Tried a lot of different banks. Caught a lot of different rocks. That is the song of a sad man right there. Just tied that thing on. Oh, there it goes. Um, I'm slowly working my way back. I have slowly worked my way back. Close to the ramp and... Uh, trying these points as I go, you know, picking up the shallow baits, hitting the points, moving out deep, but it is shut down. Uh, the closer I've gotten back to the ramp. Big scooter McGee's. God, right on the point. They're just mast mastodons down there. Got him. You gotta be kidding me. On my last fishing spot. Be a hog. Or just be something. Woo, jumper baby. That's what I'm talking about. God. Oh, my mental capacity needed you. <laughs> Ooh, man. Well, you choked that white color too. 
I had already just given up mentally. I was like in a, you know, just a autopilot casting and a uh, little guy came up and stroked it. Little sundown smallmouth. Gotta love it. Go ahead and smash it. My smell has been off since I've had the virus, so I gotta, gotta train it back again. Nope, I, I don't have it yet, y'all. Just don't have it. I should probably end on that one, but I'm just gonna punish myself a little bit more. God, these fish are just so deep, y'all. Just all species, everything that I've marked today. I haven't even really seen any good groups of shad, but the shad that I have seen are just like 40, 50 foot down. It's crazy. Oh, I got him. Good and two. No, it's not fighting. No, yeah, it is. There we go. Here we go. Oh yes, sir. Come on now. Might have a little something here. Oh yeah, there he goes. There he goes. Now he's going. Oh my gosh. Oh, the smallmouth. You gotta love him. You gotta love him. He's taking me everywhere. Woo, look at that beautiful brown fish. It's not a giant, but he's just it's just uh this is solid. Ooh man, I'm a, I'm in some trouble here. In a bad spot with the control motor situation. Okay, here we go. You're a little too big for me to fling. Golly man, I thought you were a just absolute chunk the way you came at it like a spider monkey. And he just loaded up too. That fish just kind of was there. God, that's a healthy one, man. Sundown added bonus chunk ball brown beautiful love you fish right there. Go back into the deeps. Get your feet on. See you, beautiful. Sun's going down, we are done fishing. Tough day, grinded it out though, and ended on a good note. And I'm not gonna sign it off right here. Uh, we're done fishing, but I'm gonna take it to the tackle cave right now. I got one more thing I wanna show you guys. Uh, I think it's gonna help you out. Made it back to the cave. So I'm gonna show you guys my my spoon box and I wanted to show it to you because I use this so much and especially in the winter time uh, I use it in the fall uh, I use it in the summer and I use it for so many species I catch crappie on these spoons I catch bass obviously um, white bass uh, I can't tell you how many uh, white bass I've caught on spoons in my life but it is a go-to tactic for deep water this feels like such an old school video right now. Those of you who have been on the channel for a long time know what I'm talking about. I used to do a lot of videos in, uh, in the garage. Definitely recommend investing in a, a nice box. This one's Bass Mafia. I like their products. Um, obviously this is one of ours, but uh, I'll leave a link if you guys wanna, wanna get these. But uh, this has a rubber seal around the edge. Um, you know, just something to keep your spoons dry and, and moisture free because this would be a lot of money to to run so I have all sorts of spoons in all different sizes to kind of match the situations so I'm just gonna quickly go through them these are my summer style spoons uh, and fall these are flutter spoons I, I don't break these out until um, really post spawn like June and into the the fall when they're wanting something big this thing flutters down and then I have what I call casting spoons, but what they these have like a little uh, angle to them, and it makes it kind of do a flutter action when it falls. 
I have them in nickel, I got them in gold, I got I've painted some of these. Um, just refresh the hooks, you know, that's, that's another thing I have in here. I have uh, some assorted trebles and I also have swivels. So when you're fishing spoons, your line's going to get twisted quite a bit, depending on which ones you're throwing. Um, but I keep an assortment of these little barrel swivels on hand in here so that prevents line twists. I've got split rings. So this, this entire box is just made for this. The other style spoon is a jigging spoon. So I've got an assortment of these. These style spoons don't have any action to them when they fall. You basically just pick it up, put it down, and it is a straight up jigging spoon. You can basically put it right on top of the fish and jig it up and down, or you can cast it down the ledge like it was today. Uh, but there's really hardly any action on these. And I do like them when it's really cold, when they're sitting in one spot. Today I didn't run into that, they were kind of scattered. This style right here is the same thing, it's just a little bit different profile. And I use these for, uh, for crappie quite a bit. The other style uh, is the blade style bait, which I was using today. This is one of my, t my favorite baits of all time from Catchco. Uh, this is the 10,000 fish. Death Stalker. This is a modified version of a, a classic blade bait style. So it is a sheet of metal with a little bit of lead on the bottom of it. It has a vibrating action when you lift it up. So when you lift, lift this thing up, it'll vibrate just like a, a lipless crank would. This has a barrel swivel and that little uh, willow blade on the back. So you get that added little thump and flash and it just fishes deep water so effectively. All these do, that's why I love them. So I keep a good assortment of those running low. Right now I need to get some more. And then the last style is, uh, some people call it a wing ding. <laughs> There's a bunch of different uh, people that make this, but this is kind of the same thing. It's just a slab of lead with a willow blade on the back. And I really like these in the fall, but you can just slow roll these like a, like a spinner bait, but it just gets down there deep and it's effective uh, for fishing that deep water. You just slow roll it, let that spinner do its thing. That is the spoon box. Uh, I would definitely recommend putting one together, you know, get you a small box, start out small, um, but just get you a little bit of an assortment. I definitely recommend nickel and gold um, and uh, for sunny days and just depending on water conditions I like nickel and really clear water and then get you some painted ones for for stained stained water it just depends on on where you are but uh, that is the spoon box ladies and gentlemen a little old school presentation here I thought I would leave you with that little tidbit because the first time that I had ever uh, read about spoons literally read about spoons heard about them. It was in Bassmaster Magazine many, many years ago, and there was no internet videos about how to fish them or anything. I literally would look at the animations in the magazine, uh, and look at some of the photos, obviously read it, and then go out and experiment how to do it. So glad that I could, you know, go show you guys on the water how I'm fishing it and everything, because it just, to me, visually, you know, learning it, you can just learn it so much faster and see the little things that you can't see when you're trying to read that thing. And I just, I don't know, going out there and failing so many times trying to do it, but when you finally get one on it, it just kind of unlocks some deep water. You know, fish are down there deep in those, those winter haunts. They usually hang out near creek channels and deep water. And uh, most people fish like when it starts warming up in the spring, but you can fish year round uh, using this technique. You can fish it in shallower water too. It doesn't have to be super deep, but just remember to go slow, go slower always in the winter time and try to match, um, you know, the, the fish that are moving slower. They're cold blooded animals. You gotta remember that. So anyways, y'all, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, go ahead and smash that like button for some tip action and catching the beautiful brown fish. And I think I'm going to head out to the deer lease next. So hang around. We'll see you then.